Hi, uh, welcome to everyone to the second session of today, which is a session on boomerang attacks. And the first talk on the boomerang uniformity of cryptographic S-boxes is going to be given by Anne Cantor. Thank you. So what I'm presenting here is a joint work with Christina Bura, and it's a work on boomerang connectivity tables of S-boxes. So this uh, boomerang connectivity tables, this is a new notion introduced by Carlos Cid and his co-authors at last year Eurocrypt, and this is of course related to boomerang attacks. So boomerang, uh, boomerang attacks, as you all know, is a, a notion introduced by David Wagner 20 years ago, and it can be seen as a generalization of uh, differential cryptanalysis in the sense that it uses two different differentials, one for each half of the cipher. So uh, more precisely, what we do is that we divide the cipher into two halves, E0 and E1 here. And so we first consider a differential, AD, for the first half of the cipher, which means that with a high probability, if we consider a pair of plain text, P and P plus A, and we take their images under E0, then we get two elements which differ from D. And so now from these two elements, what we can do is that we can consider a second differential now for the second half of the cipher. So this is a differential CD. And so if we add C to the two elements that have been previously obtained, then we get a quartet. And if we take the image of this quartet under the second half of the cipher, we get two pairs of ciphertext which differ from B with a high probability. And now the nice point is that by construction, the plain text corresponding to these two ciphertexts here, they, dif they differ from A with a probability P. So, this boomerang attack, it's based on the fact that with a high probability, when we take two plain texts which differ from A, compute the ciphertext, add B to the true ciphertext, and then invert the block cipher, then we get two plain texts which differ from A with a high probability. And this probability is actually the product of the squared probabilities of the two involved differentials. Of course, this holds under the assumption that the two probabilities involving the two halves of the cipher are independent. The problem is that in most practical cases, this independence assumption fails. So this was first proved by Sean Murphy, who even showed that in some practical cases, the previous probability is equal to zero. And there are also some cases where this probability is much higher than one, what is expected from the previous formula. So for this reason, uh, Dunkelmann, Keller, and Shamiyev propose instead to divide the cipher not into two halves, but into three parts, where the middle part, this EM, is very small. Typically, it's one single round or a single S-box layer of the cipher. And so the idea is to concentrate these dependencies in this middle layer here, in this middle part, and to study carefully what happens for this middle part. So the difference between between what we had previously and this probability is that now it does not involve several rounds of the cipher, but a much simpler transformation, which is typically one S-box layer. And so what is nice is that if this middle transformation is an S-box layer, which is composed of several copies of the same or of different but smaller S-boxes, then this means that we can compute this probability but for the individual S-boxes. And so this becomes feasible. And so this is a, a nice observation made at last Eurocrypt by Carlos Cid and his co-authors. What they observed is that what we could do is exactly the same thing as what we usually do for studying the differential properties of an S box by computing its difference distribution table. Here, exactly in the same way, what we could do is compute for a given S box this probability, this the number of solutions of this equation for all possible pairs of differentials A, B, and we can store these values in a table exactly as we do for the DDT. And this table is named the boomerang connectivity table, that means BCT for short. So here is an example. So this is an example for a 4-bit S-box. So what you have on the left here is a DDT of the S-box, and I will use this notation delta of A and B to denote the entry at row A and column B 
of this DDT. And as you all know, one of the most relevant parameters related to this DDT, this is the maximal value for its entries, of course, when the input difference is not zero. And so this maximal value in the DDT, it's what is called the differential uniformity of the S-box. And in that case, it, this differential uniformity is equal to four. And so what you have on the right now is the BCT of the same S box. And you can observe that it looks a bit similar to the DDT. Well, there are some differences. So for instance, you have some entries equal to six here in the BCT. And also you can see that uh, all values in the first column and the first row of the BCT are equal to 16. So actually the fact that the first, all entries in the first row and first column in the BCT are equal to two to the N, this is obvious and this was already observed in, in the original Eurocrypt paper. Well, if we come back to the definition of the entries in the BCT and just replace either A or B by zero, then you can see that all values of X satisfy this equation. So this means that what is as a relevant quantity is the maximum value we can have in the BCT, but of course, if we do not consider the first row and first column. And so by analogy with the DDT, we decided to call this the boomerang uniformity of the S-box. So a first observation made uh, in the Eurocrypt paper is that all entries in the BCT are greater than or equal to the corresponding entry in the DDT. And there is a, a very interesting case where these two values are equal everywhere, which is the case where the S box is an APN permutation. APN means that all values in its DDT are equal to zero or two. And so what is very nice is that this APN permutation, they then have both differential uniformity and boomerang uniformity, which are both minimal and equal to two, which is very nice because they offer an optimal resistance to differential attacks. And then this means that also they provide a very good resistance to boomerang attacks. And so the bad point is that these APN permutations were very nice, but uh, they only exist, as far as we know, for uh, a number of variable which is odd, or when the number of variable is six, because for n equal to six, we know a sporadic example of APN permutation. And so for all other values of n, when n is even indifferent from six, then we do not know such APN permutation. And then the question of what is the lowest possible boomerang uniformity for such S boxes? This is an open problem which was raised in the Eurocrypt paper. And so our work mainly focused on this open problem. And so what we did here in this work is that we first proved that the lowest possible boomerang uniformity for a four bit S box is equal to six. And we also provide a, a, a new formulation of the um, the definition of the, the entries in the boomerang connectivity table of the S box. And this new form, formula, it's really nice and, and it's easier to handle, especially when we consider S boxes with differential uniformity for. And thanks to this formula, what we have been able to do is to compute the BCT of two infinite families of S boxes, the inver an inverse mapping, and some quadratic power function over the field with two to the n elements when n is even. So uh, let me first with some preliminary result, which was quite help helpful for studying four bit S boxes. Uh, this is uh, what happens uh, on the BCT when we consider some S boxes which are equivalent. So we first consider two S boxes, F and G, which are a fine equivalent, which means that G is obtained from F by composing it on the left and right by two affine permutations. And then what happens to the BCT is exactly the same as what we have for the DDT, which means that the BCT of G is the same as the, the BCT of F up to a linear permutation of the rows and of the columns of the BCT. But this means in particular that both the S boxes, they have the same boomerang uniformity. Also a very simple observation is that, that exactly as for the DDT, the BCT of the inverse of an S box, this is the transpose of the BCT of the S box itself. 
What is different from what happens uh, for the DDT is that the boomerang uniformity is not invariant under what is called extended affine equivalence. Extended affine equivalence means that we compose the S box by two affine permutations as before, but we add to the result another affine function. And then uh, differential uniformity is invariant under this equivalence, but this is not the case of boomerang uniformity. Anyway, the fact that uh, boomerang uniformity and the, the set of all entries in the BCT is invariant under a fine equivalence, this was very helpful for studying 4-bit S-boxes because it's enough to study one representative for each equivalent class. So this is exactly what we did. So remember, we would like to know the lowest possible boomerang uniformity for a 4-bit S-box. We know that this value cannot be equal to 2 because the, the boomerang uniformity is greater than or equal to the differential uniformity, which is at least four in the case of four-bit S-boxes. And so what we did is that we consider all four-bit S-boxes with differential uniformity exactly four, and actually we considered one representative for each equivalent class, and also we considered one element among the S-box and its inverse, and so we used uh, the classification due to Christophe de Cagnier for this. And so we have computed the differential, uni the boomerang uniformity of all these S boxes. And for each of them, we have computed the number of occurrences of the different values in the BCT. This means, for example, that for this first S box, it has boomerang uniformity six. And in the BCT, we have 120 values equal to zero. 60 entries equal to 2, 15 equal to 4, and 30 equal to 6. And as you can see from this table, if we consider a 4-bit S-box with differential uniformity 4, then what we can find as a boomerang uniformity is 6, or 8, or 10, or 16. And uh, you can also notice that the values 12 and 14 never appear in the BCT. So what we can deduce from this is first that uh, the smallest boomerang uniformity for a four-bit permutation is exactly six, and there are two equivalence classes here for which we get this lowest possible boomerang uniformity. And something which is a bit more interesting is that by trying to understand the previous classification and, and some interesting observation, then we really um, saw that uh, there exists another formula for computing these elements uh, in the BCT, which is very helpful in the case of S-boxes with differential uniformity 4. So if we come back to the definition of the entry at row A and column B in the BCT, this corresponds to the number of solutions of this equation. And now this equation, it can be divided into two parts depending on the difference between S of X and S of X plus A. And indeed, if we fix this difference to a fixed element gamma, then this means that in this equation we can replace this S of X plus A by S of X plus gamma here. And so what it means is that this number of solution of this equation well, for computing it, we only need to compute the number of x which satisfy both equations together for any fixed for a fixed gamma, and then we just have to take the sum of these numbers over all possible non-zero gamma. So the first case which is interesting is that when gamma is equal to b, then it's not difficult to see that these two equations were exactly the same. So in that case, this means that the number of x which satisfy both equations, that's exactly the number of x which satisfies the first one, which means the elements at row A and column B in the DDT. And now when gamma differs from b, then <coughs> I will introduce, in order to understand what happens, this set V of A gamma, this calligraphic V. What is this? This is nothing else than the outputs of the S box, which satisfies the differential A gamma. And so if we look at the blue equation, then this blue equation exactly means, this is the definition of this set V of A gamma, this exactly means that S of X belongs to this set V of A gamma. 
And then after some easy manipulation, it appears that the red equation, it exactly means that S of X plus B belongs to exactly the same set, V of A gamma. In other words, an element satisfies both equations if and only if S of X belongs to the intersection between V of A gamma and the same set, but after translation by, some of, by the offset B. And this is exactly what is in, written here in this formula now. We have a new formula for the element at, at row A and column B in the BCT. This is exactly the sum of the same elements but in the DDT. So this corresponds to the case where gamma equal B in the formula, plus the sum over all gamma, gamma different from zero and B of the size of the intersection between this set V of A gamma and its intersection of the same set, but after translation by B. So with this formula, we of course recover the fact that the entry in the BCT is at least the, the value of the entry in the DDT, but it does not look so nice, but actually it's, it's easier to handle in a very specific case, which is a case where all these sets, V of A gamma, are affine subspaces, and this S boxes where all these V of A gamma are affine subspaces, they have been widely studied and this is what, are co what is called planar permutation. So this is a notion introduced by Johan and, and, and Vincent. And so uh, a specific case of this planar permutation or the S boxes with differential uniformity less than or equal to four. So this is exactly the case we are interested in. And so what happens if we look at the previous formula in that case is that this sets V of A gamma and its translation by B, both of these sets were cosets of the same linear space. And so I will denote this linear space by this V, but now in, in Roman type. And so what happens if we consider two cosets of the same linear space, then there are two possibilities only, either they are exactly the same or they are disjoint which means that the size of the, this intersection is either zero or it's the size of the whole, the whole set here, which is exactly delta of A gamma, the value that we have in the DDT. And so the condition on, under which those two cosets of the same linear space are exactly the same, well, this is exactly the fact that the offset B belongs to the corresponding linear space. So, so this means that the entry we have to compute in the BCT, this is a sum of the entries we have in the DDT in the same row, but for all columns, so gamma, such that B belongs to the linear set corresponding to the differential A gamma. So let me have a look quickly at a small example to make it uh, a bit more concrete. So suppose that I would like to compute some value, for instance, this one in the BCT of our previous S box, which is an S box with differential uniformity four. And so uh, I would like to find uh, the, the, the entry in the BCT uh, in, at row one of this S box. So this means from the previous formula that I have to consider all entries in the DDT in the same row, and then I have to compute the sets V of A gamma for all valid, so A is now one, for all valid differentials here. So if we, I look at all those sets, there is one set of size four, and all the other ones, they have size two. So let me compute those sets. So they are here, they are all affine subspaces because the S box has differential uniformity four. So you can see that there is one which, is, which has size four and actually this is not an affine subspace, this is a linear subspace, it contains zero. And all the other ones, they have size two, they are affine subspace. And actually it's very easy to compute them because it's not difficult to see that this set, if, it's, if it has size two, then the linear subspace corresponding to it consists of two elements, zero and the output difference. And so if I want now to deduce from that the value, uh, the entry in the BCT at row one and column six, then what I have to do is to just have a look at all these linear subspaces, and then I have to add the sizes of all these linear subspaces which contain the value six. 
And so I have two of them, four plus two, which means that the, va the entry in the BCT is exactly six. And so from this very small example, you can see immediately that because when all, uh, when all, this, uh, this, all these sets here of size two, two they are all disjoint, of course, if we forget about the zero value, this means that if in the row of the BCT I have only one value four, and then zeros and twos, then I cannot get something which is higher than six in the BCT. And so by this simple formula, we have many observations like this on, on the BCT of four-bit S-boxes. For instance, if the DDT has a row with at least two values, four, then the boomerang uniformity is, is greater than or equal to eight. And on the contrary, if all rows in the DDT have at most two values, four, then the, the boomerang uniformity is at most 10. And also something which was already observed in the Eurocrypt paper is that if one row in the DDT has exactly four value four, then the boomerang uniformity of the S box is maximal and equal to 16. So something which is now much more interesting that, than this, is that using this formula, we have been able to compute the differential unif the boomerang uniformity of two infinite families of S-boxes. The first one is the inverse mapping over the field F2 to the N when N is even, and this, of course, includes the AS S-box. And so what we proved is that the boomerang uniformity of the inverse mapping, this is equal to four, if the number of variables n is equal to two modulo four, and it's equal to six if n is a multiple of four. And actually what we proved is something which is much more precise because we proved that the BCT of the inverse mapping is exactly the same as its DDT, except for two values in each row, which are equal to six when n is a multiple of four and equal to four when n is congruent to two modulo four. So this is the first infinite family of S boxes with this boomerang uniformity equal to four, which is the lowest boomerang uniformity we can have, of course, unless we can find some APN permutations for this number of variables. And we also looked at a second infinite family of S boxes, which are S boxes with algebraic degree two, with also differential uniformity equal to four. So first we have a general result which proves that any permutation with differential uniformity four and algebraic degree two, it has boomerang uniformity at most 12 for any number of variables. And also, we focused on a particular example of such S boxes, which are those power permutations here, x raised to the power 2 to the t plus 1 over the field with 2 to the n elements, where the GCD between t and the number of variables is exactly 2. And this is for n equal to 2 mod 4. So this includes, for example, x raised to the power of 5 when t is equal to 2. And then what we have proved is that all these power permutations, when n is congruent to 2 mod 4, they have both differential uniformity and boomerang uniformity equal to 4. So again, this is an infinite family of S boxes with the lowest possible um, boomerang uniformity, which and is 4. Two minutes. So this is my conclusion. So, so a quick conclusion. The conclusion uh, uh, of this work uh, is that the most important result is that the, the lowest possible boomerang uniformity for an n-bit S-box. So it was known before that it was equal to two when n is odd or n equal to six. And these two is achieved only by APN permutation. And so what was open is what happened in, in the other cases. And so what we prove is that we can achieve four for when n is equal to two mod four. And so we have uh, exhibited two families of permutation for which this four is obtained as both differential uniformity and boomerang uniformity. And we also have exhibited some, some families of permutation for which the boomerang uniformity is equal to six while the differential uniformity is equal to four. So this is in the case where n is a multiple of four. And so we do not know whether we can get some uh, S boxes with both 
differential uniformity and boomerang uniformity equal to four in the case where n is a multiple of four, and so this is a remaining open problem. Thank you. Thank you. So are there any questions for Anne? Um, just a quick question. Does the, for instance, for the four bit S boxes, do the families where you can get minimum BC, well, boomerang uniformity, correlate with some other good properties of the S boxes, like, for instance, minimum number of differential, of a solution for the differential uh, equations or branch number? Or well, it, actually, these two families are, are exactly the one that. Uh, I, I, that are the elements of the, the infinite families. Oh. That, so yes. th these are exactly this inverse mapping and, and uh, okay. the, the quadratic function. So there are only two. And yeah, mm. you, you have the list here, but uh, one has, the, no, I don't know where it is, but uh, one has degree two and, mm. and uh, the other one is, is the inverse mapping. And they all have the, the optimal linearity. If you look, this or the, mm. this uh, two boards in, in the classification depends on the linearity. So these are the optimal mm. as boxes which have the best differential and linearity. Those one have a, a, a higher linearity and then you can see that the boomerang uniformity is higher. I don't know why it's correlated, but I don't know if it's a coincidence or not. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you very much. There are no more questions. We will thank Anne again for her presentation. Thank you.